Hi, Paul. Hey, it's Sandra. Nice you, honey. How have you been during this insane? Oh, I mean, how do we even describe what we've been through? Where Where are you, first of all? Well, I'm in New York. Oh. And uh, I got to start this whole interview by saying thank you. You are amazing. Um, we all love you in pose. Happy Pride Month, everybody. And uh, if anyone doesn't catch Sandyland, catch that on Sirius XM because you're oh, just thank amazing. Thank you. You've thank been a you, part honey. of this from the beginning, Sandy. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I love the organization. I love everything you guys stand for. And especially on the heels of this very challenging year where kids have been, you know, basically, we've all been in lockdown, but to be a young person who needs to be exercising and going and interacting with friends and, and, you know, and having that sort of camaraderie, what, what could you, what, 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 what did you guys do this year to help facilitate some, you know, some of, some of that bonding? Well, you asked, how do you, how do we all get through this year? And I think, I think it's two words. It's, it's dedication and passion, whether that's to your family or your job or, or a hobby. And I think a lot of us discovered that uh, uh, maybe there were things that we shouldn't have been so passionate about. We learned some other unexpected lessons. But the one thing I think we learned it up to us is this pandemic only made us more dedicated and more passionate about what we did or about what we do. And I think getting our coaches who represent dedication and passion in communities from New York to Miami to Chicago to LA in 20 cities across this country so far, just giving them the tools to redirect that passion from actually being on the playing field to virtually getting online. And that made all the difference in the world this year. So many of our kids, tens and thousands, the highlight of their day was when they got to join their coach and join their teammates online and hear that one coach, that caring adult in their life, just say, how are you doing? We're going to get through this. Was there, at, were they able to do any sort of like virtual workouts? You know, I mean, I, I, I did some with my trainer and of course it was a little frustrating, but it certainly like elevated what I could do on my own to, a, to another level. Yeah, our coaches, we did a whole Up To Us online uh, uh, training session. We created a resource center because we wanted our kids to stay active because everyone I, at, at this gala knows that mental health is really tied to physical health. And even if you're confined to a small room in an apartment, we trained our coaches to motivate those kids to get up, to exercise, to see their friends moving on, this, on the Zoom screen and really make the most of the situation because it wasn't just you know taking care of your body, but taking care of your mind. And that's why we're all here today is our ability to do that. Well, that's what's so great about your organization because now more than ever, the highlight and the spotlight is really being shined on mental health in sports. And for professional players, of course, it's a, it's a much different level, but kids who like, you know, need to get out and need to express themselves physically are also, especially a lot of kids who are involved with your organization, who you, you are, are mentoring, um, are under a lot of duress and a lot of, you know, they're un unknown factors. So how do you, how, how do you train the coaches to deal with some of that? So the most important thing, and we know this about a kid's health and well-being, is whether or not they have caring adults in their life. Somebody who they know, who they trust, who's got their back. And unfortunately for a lot of kids growing up when they're exposed to really challenging things like violence every day, um, poverty, uh, a parent who cares but may have two jobs just to pay the bills, there aren't enough adults like that S sitting there with, with kids in so many of our communities saying, whether it's a pandemic or some of the racial uprisings we've seen, you know, I know it's scary. I know there's gonna be challenges, but I'm here for you and you're gonna get through that. That's one of the most important things to mental health. And I think that's the key to our training is to train our coaches on how do you create positive relationships with kids and among kids on the team? Because if you can create those bonds, then you've created resiliency. And if you created resiliency, you help kids navigate. And if they navigate, they can in turn become successful someday, overcome the odds around them, and hopefully make this a better world from their experiences.
I mean, I think now more than ever, having just come through not only the pandemic, but a political landscape that's been totally just undermining to all of these, these kids at risk. I mean, we need more and more support from people who can, you know, sort out the good from the bad, the wheat from the chaff and, and really pull these kids up. I mean, it's, it's incredible. What do you need most of all from the people who support you or people, new people who want to get involved? What, what, what is your, what is the real key to, to what you need to make it a success every day? So I'm a very I, grassroots kind of guy. I think a lot of people at this gala who know me know that. Um, it's time for this grassroots movement to really bust wide open. Uh, I have probably the AmeriCorps program in the country. AmeriCorps is the National Service Agency. Uh, I have probably the largest representative, representative of black and brown communities in my coaching corps of most programs out there and they, they understand their communities and we've used sports to elevate them and give them a chance to be leaders in their communities and to influence the kids around them to make positive choices. We've proven in the last 10 years that this program works. This program not only works to inspire kids, but it builds that young leadership among so many of our coaches who are predominantly black and brown and predominantly from the communities they serve. This is a model for leadership and social change everywhere in this country. So what I need the most is your help, whether or not it's a donation, as simple as that, getting involved, calling up other programs. It's time we start talking to mayors, school systems, parks departments. They need to embrace this up to us sports formula of using sports to inspire the health and wellness of kids across this nation. It works. Wow. Well, that's, that's inspiring. It's inspiring me because, you know, I, I, I always wonder what more can I do? You know, I, put, I always try to put the word out. So it's just good to be able to, to articulate it in the way you always do. And whenever I go to the events, of course, I'm always riveted to, your, to, to, to you when you get up and talk and you present, you know, some of the coaches and the people who really made it happen. And you really have a, like an overview and a deep understanding of, of what these people, you know, have done. Um, um, let me ask about public schools. Um, will, will they start prior, prioritizing um, sports more than they have been? Do you think that's gonna finally come back around? So it's a great question. I think the future of sports is sports-based youth development. That is the field that UpDaw Sports has spent the last 11 years creating. And it's a field that says that sports is really not just about athletic skills. I mean, that's critical, but it's also about positive youth development. And it's also about the psychology of being an athlete. And we've learned so much about that, like what it means to be on time, to have a strategy, to develop positive relationships with your peers. So what does that sound like? That sounds like life skills. And we have got to find a way to bring life skills back into our public school systems. And I'll tell you, there's a lot right now about social emotional learning and that's what sports-based youth development is. And as always, what do we say about SEL, social emotional learning? Let's get the teachers to do it. There's more than just teachers in a school. There's coaches, there's athletic departments. So I say, let's get the sports coaches trained. Let's bring sports-based youth development and social emotional learning to our school systems, to our parks departments, and let's watch the kind of transformation that, ha that has on youth. Because we all know what youth need to learn. We need to get them ready to learn. That's what we're always missing. And if we can bring coaches as motivators into schools, not only are you gonna see your students learning a lot more, a lot more focus, but I bet you'll also see a lot more championships in your in your tournaments ahead. Right. So that's the future to me. Do you, uh, have you, do you, do you do an outreach to, to schools across the country and try to like, you know, engage the coaches and train them and, and get them, you know, fired up about this? Do you have enough manpower to do this? Uh, we don't yet. That's one of the reasons we're having a virtual gala. We were skeptical. I'm hoping this is the last season of virtual galas for everyone. 
but we really need to get more general operating dollars to build our team. We have the resources when it comes to training. We have the support of AmeriCorps. Uh, we just got to get out there and get resources around outreach and engaging schools because it does take a little extra effort there, but we're determined to do it. That's what the next decade for Up to Us Sports is going to be. And we certainly have loved and will continue to love working with the many grassroots sports programs where we currently place our coaches. That's incredible. Um, so once you feel like we're out of the pandemic, what, what's, what's the next big project for the, the upcoming year for you? I think a big area for us is we know how to train a coach. In all the topics that we've been talking about, Sandra, we, we know what it takes to train a coach. And I will say it starts with trust because coaches all are like, I'm the best soccer coach in my town. Uh, so you need to get some trust to say you are the best, but we want you to be more than a soccer coach. We want you to be a mentor. So after the pandemic, not only do I want to increase the number of coaches we're placing in communities that, to welcome kids back to fields across this country, but I also want to make our training available to every coach in every community. I want them to learn that you are not just the best coach, you are the best life influence on a kid. And here's a few tips on how to do that. Amazing. It's been incredible talking to you. I miss seeing you in person. And I look forward to next year, God willing, when we can all be together in person and, you know, achieving even more and more for, for our kids and our mentors and really taking up to us to the next level. So thank you for all the work you you just commit to, and it's great to see you, Paul. And Sandra, I'm so grateful to you. And if, if I could take a quick 15 seconds, thank you to our sponsors, ABI. Thanks to the Hunter Roberts Construction Group and Jeff Records, to Covington. Some of my, some amazing people like Nick and Christy Wood, Kim and Judy Davis, my incredible board of directors, the NFL Foundation, all state. You've made so many miracles happen, Adidas, we wear those three stripes proudly every single day. AmeriCorps, I think we have the former director in, in our audience. Thank you for all you've done for creating national service in the country. To my host sites, most importantly, to my staff and my coaches, thank you. Amazing. Thank you, honey. We'll see you soon. I hope to see you in person too, Sandra. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye, honey.